Go modules have helped bring order to Go development, but there's been some disorder lurking. Managing module pseudo versions can be difficult, especially with some of the latest changes to Go. JFrog Go Center, the free repository of versioned Go modules, now includes some important updates that can help you stay on course. Let's take a look at how pseudo versions work and what you can expect from those changes. We also offer you some guidance on keeping your Go builds working as you upgrade to Go 1.13 and later. The ability to version Go modules is a key feature providing developers a way to make sure their applications use the dependencies that they actually intend. When modules are versioned, an app can specify use of a module version they know will be compatible with the rest of their runtime. A Go module version is assigned by tagging its revision in the underlying source repository. The Go command uses semantic versioning of the standard form version x.y.z to describe the module version. The version number changes based on the changes made in the API. From this standard format, module versions can be compared to identify which should be considered the most or the least current. A versioned Go module is one that's been released for general use and should be preferred by most developers. However, there are some cases where you can't release the most recent version of a module. For example, a team may need to share an interim version during development. This is especially the case when a dependent project has no released versions yet, so it hasn't been tagged with one. Similarly, you may need to develop against a commit which hasn't yet been tagged. To use an untagged version of a module as a dependency, it must be referenced by its pseudo version identifier. A pseudo version has the following format the most recently tagged version in the commit graph, followed by the commit time in UTC, and finally, the prefix of the commit hash generated by the underlying version control. There are three acceptable forms of a pseudo version. The first is used when no earlier version commit with an appropriate major version before the target commit. The second, when most recent version commit before the target commit is version x.y.z-pre. And the third, when the most recent version commit before the target commit is version x.y.z. As a best practice, a pseudo version string should never be typed by hand. The go command will accept the plain commit hash and translate it into a pseudo version automatically. This method helps to compare revisions based on the generated timestamp. For example, a go get command might use just the commit hash for the module query, as you can see here. There are problems with not letting the go command automatically generate the pseudo version. Uh, first, the pseudo version participates in minimal version selection. If its version prefix is inaccurate, the pseudo version may appear to have higher precedence than the releases that follow it, effectively pinning the module to that specific commit. And the commit date within the pseudo version provides a total order among pseudo versions. So if it gets edited, it will mess up the ordering. Despite this recommendation, sometimes the pseudo version may exist in a Go module that has been edited by hand. In other instances, the full pseudo version string may be generated by a third party tool. Through release 1.12, Go was pretty forgiving for pseudo version references. Most operations involving pseudo versions accepted any arbitrary combination of a version string and a date and would resolve to the underlying revision, typically a git commit hash, as long as that revision existed. The release of Go 1.13 brought stricter enforcement in order to address the problems noted before. Go 1.13 restricts the pseudo versions that the Go command accepts, rendering some previously accepted but not canonical versions invalid. So the Go client now performs some validation on different elements of the pseudo version against the version control metadata. The tag from which the pseudo version derives points to the named revision or one of its ancestors as reported by the underlying VCS tool, or the pseudo version is not derived from any tag, that is, it has a vx.0.0 dash prefix before the date string and uses the lowest major version appropriate to the module path. The date string within the pseudo version matches the UTC timestamp of the revision as reported by the underlying VCS tool. The short name of the revision within the pseudo version is the same as the short name generated by the go command. 
The pseudo version includes a plus incompatible suffix only if it's needed for the corresponding major version and only if the underlying module does not have a GoMod file. And even after resolving the module from a proxy, the Go client will try to fetch the checksum content from the checksum server, which enforces the same pseudo version validation rules and will refuse to serve the checksum content. In order to move to Go 1.13, a developer must correct all pseudo version references that don't align with the previous requirements. Otherwise, the Go client will flag an exception for an invalid pseudo version. Fortunately, this is pretty easy to do through your GoMod file where your pseudo version references are made. If the GoMod file's require directive has an incorrect pseudo version, this can be corrected by the following. Replace the full pseudo version reference with just the commit hash string as shown, then run go mod tidy to have the Go client perform the proper replacement for you. And if one of the transitive dependencies references an invalid pseudo version, you can use the replace directive in your Go mod file to force the correction. An important principle of Go Center is being version agnostic. JFrog's community engineering team has made important updates to Go Center to support all versions of Go through 1.13, and we're in the process of further updates to accommodate Go 1.14 requirements. Go Center now helps you comply with the pseudo version validation by redirecting to the correct pseudo version. Go Center changes the metadata in the .info with the correct version when the module download was requested for an incorrect pseudo version. To make use of Go Center, set your Go proxy as shown here. Super simple. For Go 1.12 users, Go Center will update the Go mod file held in its repository with the correct pseudo version. Go Center will still serve the incorrect pseudo version that was processed in Go Center before this change. Go 1.13 users will receive an error message that points to the correct pseudo version. In order to update the correct pseudo version in the Go mod file, Go 1.13 users need to change the Go get to include only the commit hash part of the pseudo version. If you want to override this behavior and have Go Center continue to serve the incorrect pseudo version that was processed earlier, then you can set Go sum DB to off in your environment. As we noted, JFrog is working on changes to Go Center to support Go 1.14. Here are some of the changes to go in that release that affect the operation of modules that you may want to be aware of. For go command flags, the go get command will no longer accept the mod flag. Uh, the mod read only flag is set by default if there is no top level vendor directory and the go mod file is read only. And mod file is file is a new flag introduced which instructs the go command to read and write an alternate go mod file and an alternate go sum file will also be used. Although the file name go mod must still be present in order to determine the module root directory. Changes to the go mod file itself, go get will not upgrade to a plus incompatible major version unless it's requested explicitly or already required. Go commands other than go mod tidy will not remove a require directive that specifies a version of an indirect dependency that's already implied by other dependencies of the main module. And when the mod flag is set to read only, then the go command will not fail due to a missing go directive or any other error. For module downloads, the go command now supports subversion repositories in module mode. And the go command now includes snippets of plain text error messages from module proxies and other HTTP servers. An error message will only be shown if it's valid UTF-8 and consists of monopoly graphics, characters, and spaces. As Go modules gain even greater acceptance, standards are sure to change. You can count on JFrog Go Center to keep up with those changes and to help you over the speed bumps as the requirements evolve. If you haven't explored Go Center's free repository of Go modules yet, we invite you to do so. With a rich UI that helps you examine data, data about all 600,000 and climbing Go modules, it can help you gain powerful command over the Golang dependencies you use. Check it out at gocenter.io.